now today we shall discuss about the minerals and the energy resources in this unit first of all today we all know that human beings are largely dependent on minerals how are human beings dependent on minerals the tiniest particle let us take a safety pin from safety pin onwards to a large towering building we need various kinds of minerals and human beings are directly associated with the usage and utilization of various minerals in their day to day life you can't even use a smallest thing without minerals even the powder what we apply the talc powder also is made of minerals which are available in nature so today's lesson where we are going to stress on what are minerals how do we classify the minerals what are the different categories of minerals what are the advantages that we get from the minerals what are the energy resources and how are we utilizing them these all points will be covered in today's topic of discussion under the heading minerals and energy resources in the minerals and energy resources first of all today in the modern day the human beings life has become indispensable which means inseparable minerals and humans life has become a correlated subject without the relation with human life without using any mineral they are not able to do any work because let us take if you want to use your shirt with a tiny pin if you have any problem with your button immediately we need a safety pin which is actually made of a mineral so from the tiniest to smallest particle to the largest towering buildings large ships any constructions massive constructions massive utilizations or anything you need minerals so human life and minerals today have become indispensable combination and in this we have the tiny pins to the towering buildings not only this we generally observe when we go to the railway stations we find railway tracks which are laid with iron and in the on the road you find many vehicles moving let us take from bicycle to the modern costliest range rover cars cars all are used various kind of minerals in order to manufacture them and then moving on to the public transport system where most of us will be using the public transport system the public transport system is also made of minerals the buses the autos all are also made of minerals and then moving on to trains trains are explicitly made of minerals and moving on to aeroplanes aeroplanes are also made of minerals yes you may get a question like is the same mineral used to make all these items no the mineral may be varying but the common nature is minerals are used explicitly in our day to day life that is the point of understanding in this at this stage of time now what is a mineral actually how does the geologists define mineral who is a geologist geologist is a person who studies about the inner layers of the earth the geography of the earth is known as geologist a geologist who gave a clear definition about the minerals is the homogeneously occurred substance a substance which is homogeneous in nature which is not heterogeneous in nature what is the difference between a homogeneous and a heterogeneous substance homogeneous similar same heterogeneous different combinations together so a mineral is a homogeneous compound which is found naturally any human cannot create a mineral humans can dig the earth and search the availability of the minerals but any human cannot create any mineral so naturally occurred homogeneous substance and which should also have a definable internal structure what is this definable internal structure in chemistry we study various formulas let us take ammonium nitrate nh3 the ammonium nitrate of nh3 is having a structure of n at the middle and 3 h's coming at the pyramidal shape or triangular shape which means they have a definable structure according to the physical components of the chemical components which are available or present 
in that particular mineral or in that particular compound. In the same way, whatever substance you get in the nature cannot be called a mineral. A mineral is something which is available in nature, which is homogeneous in structure and at the same time it should also have a definable chemical structure formula for that. Then only it can be called as a mineral. So, in clear words, the geologist defined that mineral is a homogeneous, naturally occurring substance which is also having a definable internal structure. Examples of the minerals are the hardest mineral on the earth is diamond. Diamond is found in the carbon compounds where the components of carbon are very closely bound in diamond so that you find it very difficult to break the diamond. Diamond is the hardest mineral available on the earth. Moving on to the softest mineral available on the earth is talc. The talcum powders what we use come under the category of the softest available minerals on the earth. We also have various rocks coming under the category of minerals. How can a rock be a mineral? Rocks, let us put them in the definition. Rocks which have homogeneous nature and occurring naturally substances. Yes, rocks occur naturally and they also have a definable internal structure. Yes, they have a certain combination of the chemicals which are presenting or bounding them together. That's why rocks also come under the category of uh, minerals. So this is the introduction of minerals. Minerals, nowadays minerals have become an inseparable or indispensable part of the human lives. Starting from the tiny safety pin to a towering buildings, nowadays human beings are using the minerals in every walk of life, in every activity whatever he performs. He needs one or the other kind of minerals. For example, let us take railways, railway compartments, railway works, railway engines, railway tracks, railway constructions, railway bridges. For everything we need minerals. Maybe not the same mineral but different kinds of minerals are used in every aspect of human life. When we take on the cars, cars are manufactured with different chemicals and minerals. Buses, different minerals are used. Trains, different minerals are used. Aeroplanes, the other category of minerals are used because nowadays in every aspect of life, especially human life, is becoming a complete combination or closely associated with the usage of the minerals. And coming to understanding the definition of minerals, the mineral is defined by the geologists who explicitly study about the nature and the functioning and the chemical composition of a mineral. So they have defined that homogeneous naturally occurring substances which has a definable internal structure is called as a mineral. The hardest mineral available on the earth is diamond with a close combination of the carbon components and the softest one is a talc while moving on to understand the rocks Rocks also come under the category of the minerals. Now, let us discuss about the classification of the minerals. In the previous context of the lesson, we have discussed about what is a mineral, how mineral has become an indispensable part of the human life of the modern days. Now, understanding the classification of the minerals, first of all, how do the geologists classify the minerals? What are the criterias that are used to differentiate the categorization of the minerals? How can we bifurcate the minerals? Minerals are largely bifurcated by the geologists depending on the range of the color. The wide range of the color availability of the particular mineral that brings a major difference for them. So that it is very clear to understand based on the color of the object, the mineral. Then hardness of that particular mineral, crystal forms, whether it is available in the crystal forms or the non-crystal forms, that brings the definition of crystal forms and luster and the density of the mineral, 
these are the four major criteria how the classification of the minerals are mostly done by the geologists one is the range of the color the hardness crystal forms luster and density and not only this availability the form it get availed for us also plays a very vital role now once the classification of the minerals criteria are clear for us like the range of the color the hardness the crystal forms luster and density and also the availability now let's move on how are the minerals available for us minerals are available in different different forms for us one type of minerals are available or the first category of minerals are available in the form of ores what is a ore ore is an additional subsistence combination to the existing mineral a mineral will be added with some other compounds and together you get it in the form of a ore for example iron we don't get it in the form of iron you get it in the form of iron ore after you get the iron ore that has to be purified and removed the unnecessary substances so that you get the pure form of iron that's why the ores are available large under the earth minerals are mostly available in the form of ores now first ores have one negative effect as i told you before that ores are a combination of the original substance mineral plus some other components in the same way ores have the cost of extraction ores when you are taking the original mineral from that you need to put some investment to purify or to remove the unnecessary elements which are added for the substance then the next one is igneous and the metamorphic rocks under the igneous and the metamorphic rocks you find various kinds of minerals the minerals are found how do you get the minerals available on the rocks the rocks are these are formed because of heavy pressure and and continuous pressure existed on them so we get cracks in between the stones or the rocks and we get the ceramics the turn edged shapes we get the joint of the stones and the veins and the lodges the small connectivity points are called veins the larger connective points are called lodes so cracks ceramics joints veins and lodes which are present under the igneous and the metamorphic rocks makes the availability of the minerals for us like tin copper zinc and lead so this is the second category of the availability of the minerals first major category of availability of the minerals is the minerals are available for us in the form of ores second category they are available in the cracks ceramics joints veins and the lodes of the igneous and the metamorphic rocks the third major category is under the sedimentary rocks or the bed or the layers under the sedimentary rocks or the layers present under the sedimentary rocks you also get various kinds of minerals available for us because these rocks are again exposed to great heat that makes the possibility of the minerals to be found under the layers of these stones so the minerals which are available for us under this sedimentary rocks are gypsum potassium potash and sodium salt these are the major minerals which are available for us under the next category of the minerals under the sedimentary rocks next we also have the decomposition of the surface rocks when the surface rocks are decomposed when the original frame or original structure of the rock has been modified by the natural causes or the natural happenings then it moves on to the residual mass of the weathered material the residual mass the left out mass of the shaped material will give for the another existence of a mineral under that one the form of a rock gets modified after some hundreds of years through a natural process then it gets of weathered away the material and it turns into a material that is called bauxite bauxite is available for us under the category of decomposition of the surface rocks so now we have discussed about the three major categories of rocks which are available for us or the minerals which are available under the various kinds of rocks let us have a brief recap how do the classification of the minerals happen 
the classification of the minerals happen under the range of the colors hardness crystal forms luster and the density of the mineral available most of the minerals are found for us with the combination of the ores iron ore iron plus ore so there are some unnecessary elements added which are not necessarily important for us sometimes we may use the ores also beneficially for us but in the combination of the ores we need to invest to get the extraction of the original mineral out of the ore combination at the same time the next under the igneous and the metamorphic rocks cracks crevices joints veins and lodes we find various other minerals like tin copper zinc and lead and also coming to the next category the sedimentary rocks under the sedimentary rocks or the beds of the sedimentary rocks or the layers present under the sedimentary rocks you have great heat being present under that that is the reason why you find various kinds of minerals found here that is gypsum potash and sodium salt are available under this sedimentary rocks the next category of rocks are the material which is available for us the mineral is decomposition of the surface rocks the surface rocks are decomposed under the residual mass of weathered material or the example of this weathered material is bauxite now let us see the other categories where the minerals are found for us under the alluvial deposits that is it may be under the sand valley or at the base of the hills where the alluvial plains are present where the alluvial deposits bring the different kinds of minerals after a certain flow they get settled there the minerals which are found here do not get access to any kind of water those minerals are like gold silver tin are the major minerals available under the alluvial deposits and the last but not the least category ocean water ocean water is a hub for various minerals the various minerals which are available under the ocean water are common salt magnesium and bromine so like this we have the availability of the minerals under the different different places and different different levels but minerals are again further classified into the metallic and the non metallic categorization let us look at that combination and the differentiation now now let us see what is a major table that clears us the clear picture of different categorization of the minerals let us look at the classification of the minerals on a very large table so that it brings a clear picture for us how the minerals are categorized we have seen basing on the availability of the minerals where are they available what are the minerals available under which part they are available under which rocks they are available this all we have seen just now but for us to understand it better the classification has been done by the geologists in the broader way like this minerals are broadly categorized into metallic and the non metallic minerals first major division is metallic and the non metallic division again the metallic we have the minerals divided into ferrous minerals non ferrous minerals and precious minerals in the category of the ferrous minerals ferrous is nothing but the iron the combination of the iron with the other minerals or the iron itself comes under the category of the ferrous minerals examples iron iron ore nickel manganese cobalt these are the minerals coming under the category of ferrous group the non ferrous group the non ferrous group are the minerals where we don't find the influence of a mineral called iron on them then it is called non ferrous group that is copper lead tin and bauxite these are the minerals where the influence of iron is not present moving on to the third category of the minerals that is precious minerals the precious minerals are gold silver platinum where here also the influence of iron would not be present and these are a bit costlier when compared to the non ferrous minerals so minerals are broadly categorized into metallic and non metallic metallic is again redivided into ferrous non ferrous and precious in the ferrous where the minerals are having a link of combination with iron 
are called as ferrous minerals they are iron iron ore nickel manganese cobalt well at the same time we have non ferrous minerals where the influence of iron is absent that kind of minerals are copper lead tin and bauxite when moving aside from the influence of iron and the a bit lower available cost minerals moving on to the costly minerals that are coming under the category of precious minerals they are gold silver and platinum these three come under the category of precious minerals now moving on to understand the non metallic minerals the minerals where the influence of metals is absent is called non metallic minerals example mica salt potassium sulfur and granite in these minerals you do not find any kind of hard elements of the minerals that's why they are called as non metallic minerals and now moving aside from the metallic and the non metallic we have energy minerals also available in the nature the energy minerals which are available in the nature are coal petroleum and natural gas so the minerals are broadly categorized into two prior to this but after the energy minerals are discovered the division has been gone to three fold division metallic non metallic and energy resources in the metallic as we discussed we have ferrous non ferrous and the precious examples iron iron ore nickel manganese cobalt uh, in the non ferrous we have copper lead tin and bauxite well in the precious we have gold silver and the platinum while in the non metallic where the influence of the metals is zero that is called non metallic minerals that uh, examples are mica salt potassium sulfur granite and moving on to the energy resources or the energy minerals coal petroleum and the natural gas this has brought us a clear picture what is a mineral what are the different types of minerals how the categorization of the mineral system where are the minerals available for us broadly on a larger picture we have got a clear picture of this now let us discuss about india in a backdrop of available of the minerals india is a land where it is richly filled with natural resources india is having the natural resources at various levels for example because of the different land diversity nature of the land of the country india where you have himalayas where you have uh, fertile plains where you have plateaus where you have mountain ranges where you have coastal plains where you have mountain plateaus all these things brought the wide variety of the minerals also available under earth under different different locations and different different natural physical settings for example if you take at the minerals and below the minerals where the alluvial plain belts you find categories of minerals well in move on to rajasthan where is the dry land the availability of various kinds of petroleum deposits all these have increased the deccan plateau and the northern plateau have given a chances for the availability of the other various kinds of minerals like magnesium potassium sulfur granite and all these things we also have in andhra the gold deposits the diamond deposits the platinum deposits we also have iron ore deposits in karnataka we also have nickel deposits we also have cobalt deposits we also have copper deposits we also have gold deposits found in karnataka kgf kolar gold fields so we have india a land of variety where you have huge availability of the minerals now we shall discuss about the different categories of minerals and the places where they are available in india now we shall discuss about the ferrous minerals we have seen in the previous discussion that minerals are broadly categorized into metallic non metallic and again into the energy minerals so in the metallic category we have the ferrous minerals in the ferrous the most important one is the iron mineral the iron mineral actually gives a boost for the indian industries it is nearly 3/4 of all the metallic minerals are directly dependent on the iron available for us it has been a very strong base for the development of all industries in the indian context iron ore which is available for in india is a basic and the backbone for all the industries which are having the basic industries in our country we also have fortunately 
good quality of iron available for us and this good quality of iron a finest quality of iron we are getting nearly 70 percent and a mixed combination of hematite and the magnetite where magnetite is a bit better quality when compared to hematite where hematite is up to 50 to 60 percent of the finest iron is available for us in india so the most important mineral which we have for us in available on a larger scale and nearly three-fourth of the metallic minerals have a very very strong base for us three-fourth of the entire industries are found in this one and the iron ore the basic and the backbone quality or good product for every basic industry is the iron ore fortunately we have availability of good quality of iron the finest quality up to 70 percent the hematite and the magnetite up to 50 to 60 percent now let us move on to the regions where the iron ore is found or located for us the major belts in india are four major belts where the huge availability of the iron ore is found in india the first one is in orissa and the jharkhand belt orissa and the jharkhand surrounding regions have the combination of the iron ore under the layers of the earth where the mining is done and the iron ore is extracted from there and later we have Darg, Bastar and the Chandrapur belt which is located in Maharashtra and Chhattisgarh region which is having nearly 14 hematite iron ore mining centers which is having a finest quality of the iron ore available for us and available on a very larger scale that is a special quality of the second belt that is Darg, Bastar, Chandrapur belt and the third one is Ballari and Chitradurga, Chikmangalur and Tumkur. This is largely located, all places are located in Karnataka, where it is located from the entire north of Karnataka to the south of Karnataka, starting from Ballari, which is uh, on the northern edge of uh, Karnataka, well and moving on to the southern edges like Chitradurga, Chikmangalur and Tumkur, all these are located at the very uh, southern parts of Karnataka. The entire north to south has been categorized into one belt where the availability of iron ore is available where we have the Obalapuram mining uh, uh, mines established here only and the miner Mr. Gali Janardhan Reddy also did lot of his mining at prime location at Ballari and then moving on to the last category of the belt which is available iron ore for us is Maharashtra and the Goa belt where here also we have the huge availability of the iron ores found for us. So the basic industry which is having a boost and the backbone for the Indian industries and being a largest contributor for all the industries in India is the ferrous minerals iron ore. Iron ore has been a strong base and is providing a basic product for us all the industries and we also get the finest and the best quality of iron available in the India fortunately and the belts which are available for iron ore where iron ore is found in these regions in India is Orissa and the Jharkhand belt in the states of Orissa and Jharkhand, Darga, Bastar and Chandrapur belt states of Maharashtra and Chhattisgarh and the states like Ballari, Chitradurga, Chikmangalur and Tumkur belt that is in the entirely in the Karnataka region from north to south and moving on to the combination of Maharashtra and Goa belt in the state of Maharashtra and the region of Goa where the iron ores are available for us. That's how the iron ore is extracted in the Indian context. Now, the next most important mineral coming under the category of the ferrous group of family or the ferrous family is manganese. Manganese is very, very important mineral. It is used to make steel and also the ferro-manganese alloys. In order to make steel, you must and use the manganese combination. Otherwise, you cannot make the steel to get it solidated in the same way ferro manganese alloys are also very important to make it useful for us 10 kgs of manganese is must and mandatory to make one ton of steel in order to make thousand kgs of steel you need to use one percent of that that is 10 kgs of the manganese has to be added so that the steel gets consolidated it's not that only in steel we use this one we are using manganese in the combination of the bleaching powder in order to clean the our houses bleaching and also we are using in the insecticides and paints which we use in our day-to-day -day lives in order to kill the insects and also to color our houses 
paintings and all and we have the largest production from the state of Orissa which accounts for nearly one third of the entire India's production on regards to manganese is collected from Orissa ore belt. So manganese is the second most important uh, mineral which is available for us in India and it is very very useful in making of steel and the ferromanganese alloys. 10 kgs of steel is being used must to make 1 ton of steel. 10 kgs of manganese is very very important to be added to get 1000 kgs of steel. It is also used in the making of bleaching powder. It is also used in the making of the insecticides and paints and also to understand the manganese is largely found in Orissa which is nearly accommodating for one third of the entire production of India's manganese production. Now moving on to understand the non-ferrous minerals. The non-ferrous minerals mainly are copper and bauxite. Copper, India has been a deficient country in availability of copper because it has been a malleable object and ductile and good conductor of heat or electronics. When it comes to deficient, deficient means not available in the completely required level or required amount of the product is not available that is called deficient and coming to malleable malleable means when it is exposed to heat and when it can be formed into the form of thin layers and sheets malleable means it can be made as thin layers and sheets so copper in india is deficient and it is deficient because it is can be made as malleable it is ductile it is a very good conductor of heat and electricity and when we talk about the good conductors of electricity wood is a bad conductor of electricity whereas copper is a good conductor of electricity the energy passes through copper very fast and very soon so it is very useful to make electrical cables electronic items that's why copper is on high demand and in india unfortunately we don't have much availability of copper for us and next moving on to the possibilities where we have the availability of copper is at Balgat mines. The Balgat mines contribute in Madhya Pradesh for nearly 52 percentage of the entire available copper in India. And also we have Singbam district in Jharkhand where we also have the availability of copper. Copper, unfortunately India has very less availability of copper. Copper is a very very useful mineral because it is a malleable mineral where you can make sheets from copper and then it is a very good conductor of electricity and it is very useful to make electronic goods and the electronic items as well as it is very very important to have electronic cables and electronic goods where coming to the production of copper as we discussed earlier the production of copper is very less in India among that available percentage Balgat mines in Madhya Pradesh are being the largest contributors with nearly 52 percent whereas Singbam mines in Jharkhand are the second largest contributors of copper in our country. Moving on to bauxite, bauxite and the bauxite deposits are the next part of our lesson. Bauxite is used in making of aluminium. Aluminium is extracted from the combination of bauxites. It is found under the rocks various varieties of rocks you find the aluminum silicates the aluminum silicates actually bauxite gives to the rise of aluminum aluminum is found under the rocks whereas the combination of bauxite and the aluminum where aluminum is also very very important metal or a mineral for us because aluminum is also used in the manufacturing of aeroplane industry where nowadays a modern means and the fastest means of transport being the aeroplane industry has a very large demand for the mineral of aluminum. Aluminum also conducts the same qualities as that of copper. Uh, it is very good for the combination of iron and gives lightness means a very light weight and also it is a very good conductor of electrical goods or electronics and same as a copper it is also having the nature of malleability malleability as i told you malleability means we can make thin sheets using this particular mineral so bauxite and aluminium are very very useful minerals of the modern day and where is the possibility of availability of uh, bauxite for us bauxite deposits are found near 
Amarantak Plateau and the Michael Hills. Amarantak Plateau and the Michael Hills are being the largest contributors of the bauxite for us. And the largest producer of aluminum is we have in Orissa at the Panchapatmali at the district of Korapat district. That's how we have the availability of the non-ferrous minerals. The non-ferrous minerals main one is copper whereas copper in India we have deficit. We have malleable nature for copper which gives special significance for copper. It is a very good conductor of electrical goods and electricity which is found in the states of Madhya Pradesh and Jharkhand. While we have bauxite which is another important mineral. It also gives rise to the combination of aluminium where it is found in large amount. It is combined with iron to get the light nature for the iron and also it is also having the features like copper like good conductor of electricity and the malleability whereas it is found in the Amarantha Plateau and also in the Michael Hills and in the parts of Orissa where you find huge deposits of bauxite and aluminium. Now let us move on to the non-metallic minerals. Now understanding the non-metallic minerals available in India. The first non-metallics can be categorized into one is mica, the other one is the rock minerals. Mica and the rock minerals are the two major non-metallic minerals which are available. In the non-metallic minerals we have the limestone which is available for us in the non-metallic and rock where we get it in the form of rock. When we come to mica, mica is available abundantly in India where it is available in the form of series of plates and these series of plates are in very very thin sheets these thin sheets if you line up around 1000 sheets also you may get only a few centimeters of height which means at this edge of width you can keep at least 1000 sheets of mica and this mica is available in different different colors for us like black green red yellow brown all are in clear colors well as it is having very low power loss if you pass electricity through this and it is having the insulation capacity or insulating capacity. It is having the uh, resistance power to high voltage. It can stop the high voltage power. These all features make mica a specific instrument which is used in the electronic goods especially. So in order to have the growth of electronic industries or the manufacturing of electronic products we need abundantly mica on a larger scale. In India we find mica two states that is in Jharkhand and Rajasthan mainly and in some parts of Nellur also in Andhra Pradesh we find the deposits of mica. Mica is a very very useful mineral for electronic industry whereas it is availability itself shows that it can be used in a very very large and thin sheets because it is probably found in the form of thin sheets where even thousands of sheets also would line up to get only a few centimeters of width or height. Whereas in computers or in laptops and we nowadays prefer all the slim items. So would like to prefer something which is very thin. So mica would be a very good alternative because mica is also having good resistance power of low power loss and insulating capacity. And also it is very good to have high voltage resistor capacity for mica. So these all are the adding up points for mica to be a very good source in order to use that particular mineral in making of the electronic items especially mobile phones, laptops which are very thin in their nature. And now moving on to the rock minerals as I mentioned for you in rock minerals we are dealing with the limestone. Lime is actually a combination of rock which is made up of calcium or calcium plus magnesium carbonates. That's why it has the thick combination. It is found under the sedimentary rocks. The lime is found under the sedimentary rocks or the sed lime rocks are found under the sedimentary rocks. Uh, limestone generally where do we use? We use limestone in the industry of cement industry where the basic raw material for cement industry is uh, limestone and in, other, in order to melt the iron and to have a blast furnace we need a very high heat reactor that is Smelting iron ore is must and mandatory because then only you can separate the ore from the pure iron and get the uh, hematic or metallic iron for us which is required. So smelting of iron ore is must and very important and in India we have huge availability of iron ore. So the importance of limestone rocks has been improved or increased because of the it is used in the melting of the iron ore in the blast furnace. So 
mica is used for making in the electronic products whereas limestone or lime rocks are used in making of cement industry and also in smelting of iron ore industry these are the two major non metallic industries which are found dominantly in the indian origin now we shall discuss about the conservation of minerals fortunately though india have many minerals but still if we do not use anything in a proper manner we would definitely lead into the exhausting of the minerals now if we take a brief jot down of the points where we can talk about the minerals human beings are highly dependent on the minerals we in the introduction of the lesson itself has mentioned human life has become an indispensable part without the association of the minerals and later on it takes millions of years for the nature to create these minerals but we as human beings use extraordinary machinery equipment and daily drill out the available minerals on a larger basis in a day to day basis and these minerals are finite and they are not at all renewable at all so they are coming under the category of non renewable sources of energies or minerals they decrease with when we go on using continuously the minerals that would automatically result in the destruction and the decrease in the quality of the mineral what we are getting for us and we have to take the next possible alternatives such as like recycling and using the substitutes instead of using only the coal coal if you use on continuously go on using to generate thermal electricity as we go on using it continuously that would automatically result in the exhausting of the mineral called coal and whereas coal cannot be non uh, cannot be regenerated again so automatically it is a non renewable source of energy where it becomes to difficult to recycle that one so we should try to explore all the new possible alternatives other than only having coal energy like hydroelectricity like thermal electricity and then moving on to the wind energy solar energy so all the possible options we have to check it out so that to reduce the recycling or the decrease of the quality of the product or mineral which is coming for us and we should try for the next substitutes if we do not use our minerals properly and carefully if the mineral mining laws are not implemented properly that would definitely result in the hazarding of mining which is very very difficult and destruction for the entire mankind minerals are a dependable part of our life where it takes millions of years to form for them for the nature but it takes only a few years for us to squeeze off the entire mineral wealth which is available under the layers of the earth using the latest modern machinery and these minerals are available only in finite and in the non renewable format for us whereas the decrease of the quality would be the result of exhaustive use of these minerals and recycling is a very very difficult task for all of us and now moving on to the energy resources the energy resources are the resources which are used to generate energy energy is the most important item for all of us because starting from the day oning on switch oning the light to the day where we sleep even we switch on the bed lights and we sleep so there is nothing which is left out without the use of electricity so the energy can be in different forms we are having habituated to closely associated with the forms of energy like electricity so the generation of electricity has been broadly categorized into the two major categories like conventional energy non conventional energy the conventional energy are the sources which are used in a traditional methods where you are using it from many years for example in the conventional energy we have the firewood coal petroleum natural gas hydel and thermal electricity comes under the category of uh, conventional energy naturally which are occurring for us that comes under the category of uh, conventional energy for example firewood we burn firewood to get fire we use coal to burn that one we use petroleum to drive the vehicles we use natural gas for cooking we use hydel and thermal power in our day to day requirements when it comes to the non conventional energy types the non conventional other than the regular usage of the conventional types when we move on to the other category of energy resources that are the non conventional types those are solar energy wind energy tidal energy geothermal energy biogas and finally the atomic energy these are the non conventional types of energies which are available for us 
we discussed about the conservation of the minerals we are highly dependent as human beings on the modern day dependent on the minerals it takes millions of years for the earth for the nature to form those minerals but it takes very few years for us to squeeze off the entire mineral wealth available for us they are available in the finite and the non renewable formats for us whereas the decrease of the quality would be the result of exhaustive usage of all the minerals and recycling and substitute are to be seriously taken as a step for concern and the mining laws have to be implemented very strictly so that this kind of negative implications should not result and moving on to understand about the energy resources we have two major categories of energy resources conventional type of resources and the non conventional type of resources the conventional type of resources are firewood coal petroleum natural gas hydel and thermal power whereas the non conventional type of resources are solar wind tidal geothermal biogas and the atomic energy resources these are the major energy resources available for us now we shall explicitly deal with conventional types of energy resources and the non conventional types of energy resources now the conventional sources of energy as we discussed in the previous part of the lesson conventional and the non conventional sources of energy in the conventional sources of energy we have coal petroleum and we have natural gas electricity electricity again thermal and hydroelectricity first let us move on to coal coal has been a major chief source available for power generation in india the coal has been explicitly used to have power generation in india from the time since we got independence prior to independence also the britishers under the colonial rule have triggered to have this power generation plant during their tenure but later nowadays because of continuous decay of the plants that has been result in the quality of the coal coming down so which has resulted in the formation of uh, ignite ignite is a low quality brown coal available for us ignite fields are available for us in located in naiveli in tamil nadu where this coal also has been used nowadays to generate electricity and the other negative impact what we have for us when we use coal is the thermal uh, usage of coal leads to uh, temperatures increase when it compares to the day to day temperatures and when it gets overheated the overheating temperature also is used in some of the factories and industries known as uh, bituminous coal which is very very giving very high temperatures for them to burn it and it is nearly 200 million years age according to geologists the formation of the coal has been traced and many of the northeastern states like assam meghalaya arunachal pradesh contribute for the larger availability of coal and even we also have in telangana state with singreni coal mines are found jharkhand we have the coal mines and we also have in karnataka coal mines are present for us so coal is a major source of power generation because of the continuous decay of plants and swamps it has been resulting into a disastrous situation the availability of the coal quality is coming down resulting in the low brown quality of coal ignite as we don't have any other possible alternatives in a larger scale we are using the same ignite coal and in the naiveli of tamil nadu which is used to generate electricity we also have very high temperatures as a impact of usage of the coal and it has been traced by geologists that around 200 million years would be the age of the formation of the coal from many years and in many parts of india we find coal that's why coal is being used explicitly and extensively for power generation now moving on to the next category of energy that is in the conventional source of energy that is petrol petroleum is actually known as a mineral oil also the mineral oil actually it has been used to heat and the products as well as to light and the products we in order to generate electricity at the same time in order to burn some things also we use this mineral oil and it has also been a nodal industry a key industry for synthetic textile industries chemical industries and the fertilizer industries where petroleum products are also added for this the mineral is added to make the extracts out of the ministry industries like textile industries chemical industries and the fertilizer industries we also have on the layers which are oil is found and the above layers we have gas as it has light weight the gas layers are found above the oil layers and these two both are found under the layers of the rocks which are sandy and where it is having porous layers where porous means holes when the holes are present the oil gets filled into the rocks 
so the non porous layers would be a good rock to get petroleum product outside from the rocks and in india we have 63% of the petroleum available from the mumbai high located in the arabian sea and 16% from the northeastern state of azam where the dig boy plant is been established the petroleum plant is been established so petroleum the most important mineral oil which is used to heat and lightening the products where it has also been a main nodal industry for the in industries which are associated with this one like the tech synthetic textile industries chemical industries fertilizer industries and we also have petroleum gas available for us with the less weight when compared to oil so above layers of the oil layers we find the petroleum layers and we have in india 63% of the requirements of india are fulfilled by the mumbai high which is located in the arabian sea and in the digboy plant of petroleum where 16% of the india's requirement are derived from assam from this region and next moving on to the natural gases natural gas is a most economical friendly or eco friendly gas or eco friendly energy which we say that environmental friendly energy also the only and only gas which is environmentally friendly and we also have economical friendly which is used as a clean energy because you get petrol mixed with some products you get coal which is non renewable energy whereas natural gas you don't have any negative implications where high temperatures has a negative effect of coal and here you have the porous rocks which take away the oils and we have the possibility like petrol may get into exhaustible state whereas natural gases were clean energy safe energy and which is used in the raw materials which is an environmental friendly energy in india especially for us in andhra region we have in the kg basin we have found this one and nowadays many of the vehicles instead of using petrol and diesel now they are moving on to have the cng vehicles where the compressed natural gas is used and it is of very low noise whereas it is also contributing for reduction of the sound pollution on a very large scale that's why natural gas is also known as a clean energy as well as it is used for raw material in many industries it is an environmental friendly one and it is also economically very good and competitive for the nowadays in the modern days to use this one so the location of this region of energy resource is found in kg basin in andhra region and is also the compressed natural gas has been derived from the natural gases where it is being a viable possible alternative and a good alternative for petroleum in the products of diesel for the vehicles and moving on to the electricity thermal and the hydroelectricity electricity is generation of electricity from the electrons or flow of energy is called electricity where in the, when we are generating electricity using coal petrol natural gas it is called thermal electricity whereas when you are generating electricity with the flow of water it is called hydroelectricity moving on to thermal and the hydroelectricity the energy when it is produced using the coal petrol natural gas it is called as thermal electricity when it is generated using the flow of water then it is called hydroelectricity in india we have nearly 310 power plants coming under the category of thermal power plants whereas in hydro we have very few like damodar valley corporation then kapikara hydro power projects which are very very less in number but they are also known as multi purpose projects so the conventional type of sources of energy or conventional sources of energy are coal petroleum natural gas and electricity coal is used for power generation petroleum is also used for power generation natural gas is also used for power generation and electricity obviously for generating electricity decaying of the plants is resulting in the loss for the coal whereas low quality of coal is being emerged ignite where we don't have any other possible viable alternative we started to use the same low quality of coal and in tamil nadu in the place called naiveli where electricity has been generated from that place the negative implication of usage of coal is that we have a possibility of increasing of temperatures when we use coal more when we talk about the mineral oil the petroleum where it is being a nodal industry and adding up for the industries are advantage for the industries like synthetic chemical industries or textile industries chemical industries fertilizer industries gas is also available for us petrol gas at upper layers of the oil whereas 63% of the india requirements are derived from mumbai high in the arabian sea and 16% from the northeastern state assam 
at the Digboy Petroleum Plant. And we also have the natural gas, the most environmental friendly glass, clean gas, which is available as an energy for us and a raw material for us. This is available for us in the region of Krishna Godavari Basin, where it is being also generating CNG, compressed natural gas, which has been a viable alternative for the petrol and diesel. Nowadays, many of the vehicles are using CNG. And now moving on to electricity. In electricity, we have again two categories or bifurcation basing on the sources which are used to generate electricity. One is coal, petrol, natural gas come under the category of thermal electricity while flow of water is being used as source for generating electricity then it is called hydroelectricity. In India, we have nearly 310 uh, thermal power plants whereas very few hydro power plants. These are the different categories of conventional sources of energy. Now let us find out what are the non-conventional sources of energy. Now as we discussed prior to this the conventional sources of energy now we shall throw light on the non-conventional sources of energy. The non-conventional sources of energies are as we discussed earlier the nuclear energy or the atomic energy, the solar energy, the wind energy, the biogas as well as the tidal energy and geothermal energy. Now nuclear energy, how is an energy derived from the nuclear sources? Nuclear energy means from the nucleus you have an atom where atom when it releases, it releases certain amount of heat energy. Using this heat energy or the atomic energy, we can generate electric power. This breaking of the atoms would result in the release of the exhaustive heat that is used to generate electricity. This kind of breaking of atoms can be happened between the elements like uranium and thorium. These two are available abundantly in Jharkhand, which are resulting for us to have a viable possible alternative of nuclear energy. India is a country where it is blessed with heavy sunlight and huge water, waves, tides and abundant insulation energy and availability of various nuclear uh, elements which can react and generate electricity for us. So nuclear energy can be generated by breaking the atoms. When the atoms are released, you get heat energy. Using this heat energy, we can generate electric power. The elements which can contribute for the contribution of or for the extraction of nuclear energy are uranium and thorium where we have in Jharkhand. These are available in large number. Nowadays, we are planning in Tamil Nadu with the cooperation and collaboration of USSR government or the Russian government, the Kundal Kulam power project or nuclear power project to be established on the edge of Chennai or in the Tamil Nadu coast where we are having to have a new nuclear power plant to meet the requirements of India of the modern day times. Now moving on to solar energy. Solar energy. Solar energy India has been basically located with the latitudes of 8 degrees north to 37 degrees north of the northern hemisphere. We all know that 0 to 0 is the equatorial point and 23 and a half is the tropical point. India has been coming under the category of tropical countries. So it is clearly evident for all of us that India receives a huge and bulk amount of sun rays. So that would act actually add upon for the tropical country to be getting huge amount of solar energy. And this solar energy is a clean energy as the natural gas energy. And this has been a great trendset example when it, the largest solar power plant was established at Madhapur in the Buj where it has been used to sterilize the milk cans to make them always be hot. And this has been a very very environmental friendly energy available for us. And nowadays the most viable possible alternative for all the countries in the world especially who can have a possibility of getting sun rays in huge amount is the solar energy. After the nuclear energy the most famous energy is solar energy because nowadays yes there are some negative implications like solar energy is too costly to keep and when the sun rays are not efficient or sufficient to get then it is difficult to maintain that. But still the most viable alternative for today's thermal electricity is solar energy. The next two possible alternative is wind. India is having a huge wind power. So India is also called as wind superpower country where we have huge wind power available for us 
and two projects are established from the wind large landmark where nagar coil to madurai a wind warms wind fans are kept for us and this is located in tamil nadu and in rajasthan also we have at jaisalmer where the best use of the wind energy has been made on a very larger scale to derive electricity from this one and this also being a contributed a natural energy without getting any negative implications on the environment moving on to biogas in biogas the waste has been decomposed or the in the organic matter which results for them to establish the gobar gas plants in the rural india we are all very famous in india using the cow dung manure and everything that results in the generation of electricity which is also a, a possible viable alternative because where the dust or the waste is not being thrown somewhere else and the land is getting spoiled instead of it is recycled to generate a good electricity where two things are been managed very positively and very clearly that's why biogas also has been a very good suggested alternative when compared to thermal electricities and moving on to the very very crucial electricities that is the tidal electricity and the geothermal electricity in the tidal electricity the tides of the oceans are been targeted and then the water which is collecting in the form of tide when we get high tides the flood gates are been placed and in this flood gates the high tide water has been collected once the high tide rises up the water which is coming in the high tide will be collected and once the empty water leaves off the high tide water which is collected will be released through a pipeline which is coming with a very huge force that makes the turbines to rotate with a heavy speed when the turbines are rotating with heavy speed that would automatically result in the generation of electricity that is called the tidal energy the tides have very huge force with them so they generate huge electricity for us this is very good alternative at the places where we have the ocean tides available for us like at the gulf of kachach in 900 megawatts of electric power plant has been established by national hydral power corporation which is being a very good sign for a growing country like india and moving on to the last category of non conventional sources of energy that is geothermal energy geo means earth under the earth there is energy yes we all know that under the earth we have the heat capacity of the earth when the earth when we are going down into the deep of the earth we find that the temperatures are going increasing when we are going above the earth the temperatures are decreasing when you are going below the earth the temperature is increasing when the temperatures increase to a very larger extent there the underground layers of water get disappear the rocks will be very hot once the rocks get very hot when the energy is being brought to land that would result in the form of steam this steam will be collected and it will be used on the turbines which makes the turbines to rotate with a great speed automatically resulting in the driving of the turbines results for the generation of electricity in this two project or like pilot based projects are established at uh, himachal pradesh and in ladakh regions only two are established in our country the thermal geothermal plants but india should be always concentrating on these non conventional sources of energies like nuclear energy where we have no destruction to the nature where solar where it's available abundantly for us wind india is a wind super power country then biogas where india has naturally used many of the organic material in its day to day life in the rural india and in the urban india which can result in the establishment of gobar gas plants in every rural village this could be a very possible viable alternative and tidal energy where we have both sides on the edges of bay of bengal as well as on the arabian sea we can use these waves for us to get energy for us and then geothermal energy india is ob- obviously we know that india is a very hot country so underground layers are obvious will filled with heat energy we can bring that heat energy into the land and convert it into steam and use that one the possible ways so india is kind a country where the low energy level country or low efficient country in terms of energy because india has been always concentrating on the thermal energy or the hydro power plant energy and has never used any viable options on a larger scale like nuclear solar wind biogas the tidal or the geothermal energies to bring them as an alternative sources of energy maybe economic terms could be some of the restrictions but still in the growing nature 
and the growing harm to the environment or hazard to the environment we need that it is a need of the hour that india need to concentrate on the framing of the energy on the terms of non conventional sources and leaving aside the conventional sources of energy to a very restricted entry because they have to concentrate more on the non conventional sources of energy development rather than improving conventional sources of energy on a larger scale so that percentage should be reduced and this percentage should be increased then india can get to a possible alternative and can be termed as a energy efficient country and during this period when the environmental degradation is going on in a very high rate you can use all the environmental sources which are available for us without causing any harm for the environment so that the plants and the trees which also results in the global warming can be reduced our india can contribute with development as well as for the economical growth and also in the environmental growth also shaping the country's temperature to be coming down on a larger scale these all possibilities could be result and we all need to remember under the line saying that energy saved is energy produced we cannot destroy the energy like we cannot say that energy used unconditionally and without saving energy you can't expect energy can be produced in a larger scale so we need to remember the point under the line that energy saved is energy produced that should be the main understanding of india changing from the non conventional from the conventional type of energy producing to non conventional type of energy and also making india a bright and efficient country energy country in the world